So today we are going to discuss how to download your data. So you want to click on the tab Data and Analysis. You will see on the right that five responses have been recorded. Note this doesn't mean a complete response and we will discuss this later. Responses in progress are people that are part way through your survey. Uh, and here we can see that that's for no people. Um, to download your data, click where it says Export and Import and click on Export Data. And you want to select Export Data with Legacy Format. Um, CSV is a file that can be read by, is a file type that can be read by Excel. There are other formats that you can pick from, so you can go straight into SPSS. However, you might want to tidy up your data in Excel first. We're going to click on More Options and make sure that export viewing order data for randomized surveys is selected so if you have any randomization you can see what was presented to the participants in what order then select download this takes a few seconds because we've not got that much data but if you have a larger data set it might take longer it will download as a zip file so you might want to go back into your downloads right click and click extract all and then extract so that you get it unzipped then double click on your document so this is what it looks like don't worry about these hashtags because if you expand the column out you'll see the data each row is representative of a different participant so that's your first participant second participant third and fourth as you can see, there's some data here which isn't relevant to us. So we can highlight these columns and you can delete them. And essentially those columns that were blank were relevant if we'd set up Qualtrix panels, but we haven't. And we can also get rid of the response and name. We don't need these. Okay, so status, if we get up our Internet Explorer. Um, you can go onto the Qualtrics support site and there is actually a page which talks about understanding your data. So if this tutorial um, isn't comprehensive enough for the question that you have, then do refer here. And this gives you a list of what all the numbers in the status column means. So zero uh, indicates a normal response so this is just a normal person taking part in your survey um, you can see here one this is where I previewed my survey um, and it's coded as one in my data and if you as a researcher keep previewing your survey you might want to delete these responses um, it's also important to look out for a possible spam response because this is a fake response um, you also get given the start and end date and the start date starts from when the person pay, pay, makes their first click um, on the page of the survey. We're also interested in the finished column and essentially one indicates that the respondent has reached an end point in their survey and that means they've clicked the last next submit button right at the end or skip logic has taken them to the end and zero indicates that they've left the survey at any point and if they click X at any time uh, you'll get zero coded in your data in this finished column but it'll have all the data for them up to that point. Now we're going to go through our survey and compare it to our data. So to begin um, we're going to look at question three and the question numbers here are along the top row in your data and question three underscore one basically means the first question in question three so that's referring to the first name date of birth is question three underscore two email is question three underscore three etc and again if you can just drag this out to see the data on our rank order questions Question four underscore one indicates the top ranked, so whatever's been, whatever's been chosen as the most number one. So, and the numbers here relate to the characters. So number four, if we scroll down, 
in, is the hook. Number three is Peter Griffin, and um, etc. So you can see that the number relates to the number on the side here. So that's how you can identify which character was put first. So this is for each participant, underscore one is the most employable, the second most employable, the third most employable, the fourth most employable, employable, etc. Then if we scroll down to question seven, which is our multiple choice question, um, we can see that yes um, has been given a number and is coded as numerically in our data. And yes is coded as uh, number one, maybe number two, no as number three, and four as other. And you can check what each response is coded as in your data by selecting this cog and clicking on recode values and then ensuring this tick box is selected you can see what everything is coded as. And you can also change what things are coded as here. Next, if we go down to our matrix table, which is question nine, that you can see again, it says question nine underscore one, underscore two, underscore three. And question nine underscore one refers to the first statement. Question nine underscore two refers to the second statement. Question nine underscore three, the third, etc. And if you want to see what these are all coded as, so if someone selects strongly agree, what is that coded as numerically in the data? Again, you can click on the cog, click recode values, and you can see here what everything is coded as. Finally, we have our slider questions, and we're asking people to rate um, between one and 10 how important these traits are. And if we scroll across to our data, you can see that it gets coded the precise um, number. Okay. And that is essentially a quick summary of what the data looks like in Excel and how to understand what it all means.